Welcome to Dungeons and Dragons Dark Alliance. We're going to be talking about this game absolutely every single detail you need to know about this one because yes, it's coming up here on June 22nd to basically every platform out there. And also we're going to be taking a look at our first look at the base camp area, which is going to be your hub space where you can hang out with your friends, take on new missions, talk to merchants, upgrade your gear, and so on. So some really cool stuff in this video, including how big is this game, the open-ended design, some really cool concepts that I think are very, very cool, the end game, elemental gear sets, post-launch support, and so much more. So since this video is going to be a little bit bigger, I have included a video guide in the description below if you want to skip ahead to the details that you seek. But yeah, let's dive into all the details about Dark Alliance right now. Hey everyone, what's happening? Open World Games here. Hope you're doing good, and we're going to dive into those details right now. So yes, this is a third-person action RPG. Uh, it's kind of a looter-shooter type game in that you will be seeking out new gear and weapons constantly as you play the game. So it is going to have an RNG uh, system with it. Now, you cannot craft your weapons and gear from scratch, but instead, uh, the weapons that you will be randomly obtaining through your advan adventures, you will be able to upgrade those uh, as you go. So the RNG system in this one has to be really good, of course, uh, and we'll be finding out on June 22nd. Now, of course, there's going to be four playable companions. Uh, we have the famed Rogue, uh, a warrior king, Battlehammer, and his adoptive children, the barbarian Wolfgar, and of course the ranger Caddy Bree. They all have their own strong attacks, uh, dodge, light attack, uh, some special abilities that run on cooldown timers, of course, and you got to remember they have their powerful ultimate that can be unleashed. Uh, and yeah, there's some really impressive moves with that one for sure. Now, there's also like a combo system with all of this uh, as well. And you're seeing some new gameplays, a gameplay right here uh, on screen. It looks really, really good and clean. And I cannot wait to get into this game and just to feel how it feels. From what I've heard, it feels really good so far. But we have some comments here from the creative director, Jeff Haddam, uh, who was interviewed by IGN. And this is what he had to say about the combat system. He says this, I call it the emergent combat system. Uh, and he goes on to say, you don't necessarily need to memorize button presses. You just go with the flow and it's gonna feel cool. But so far from what I'm seeing on screen with a lot of the gameplay is that it looks really Good. And you know, they also have some videos out there highlighting some of the moves that you can actually perform uh, with like the dwarf like character, as you can see right here. Uh, so, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that you can learn per character and a bunch of special abilities uh, that you can actually level up. But you're going to have to make choices because apparently you can only have two of those special abilities equipped per character. So, there's going to be a lot of uh, different interesting combinations that you can do uh, with your characters in this game. Uh, now, how big is this game? That's going to be the big question. It is going to be available, by the way, on Xbox Game Pass. And as I recall, the PC Xbox version of Game Pass as well. So that's very interesting. Now, it has 21 handcrafted levels and missions. These aren't randomly generated dungeons. They really want to make them feel super unique between one another, which I think is great. Uh, now, they go on to say this. Each of the 21 missions are unique layouts, unique encounters to do individually. There's a lot of content in the game, and they are very proud of that. Uh, now, there's also a lot of variety with the enemies, apparently. There's going to be seven enemy families. They're calling them families, and within these families, there's going to be a total of 30 monster archetypes. And what's really important about these archetypes is there's going to be elemental, uh, you know, damage that they can do to you, you know, electricity, frost damage, uh, fire damage. And one of the things you're going to have to seek out in the game is armor, elemental armor pieces that you're going to want to upgrade to really handle certain missions and levels as you go on your adventure. Uh, now, some missions take upwards uh, to like 25 minutes to complete, but this all comes down to the difficulty which let's talk about the difficulty right now shall we so there's going to be six challenge ratings and they're going to be similar to world tiers from outriders or the division two now the payoff with higher challenge ratings of course is going to be you're going to be getting that better loot 
uh, more often and loot is going to be thankfully instance based uh, by the way and enemies will also scale according to how many players are joining you in co-op so that's really good news that they have a scaling system in play here. Again, you could play this game, of course. If you really, really want to, you can go ahead and play it single player. Uh, but they do recommend playing the game in co-op once you hit those higher challenge ratings, of course. That's going to make a lot of sense. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the base camp. As you can see, this is going to be the area where you could hang out with your friends. You could take a look at your achievements and trophies over here and your accomplishments on your travels as you go through these dangerous dungeons and places uh, that you will be tackling. Uh, then there's going to be some merchants uh, that will be offering you your buffs before you go on your adventures. You're going to be able to carry around four potions, which again, will be able to heal you, buff you in certain ways, and give you certain resistances as well. So you can prepare for specific adventures and specific uh, missions in that manner. Uh, but yeah, you can upgrade your gear here and uh, basically sort out your character before going on adventure and obtain your loot. It looks like uh, unlike Outriders, where the loot is rewarded to you right at the end of a mission and you have the potential of discounting and losing it, it looks like it goes to this hub and then you can obtain it, which I think is a great way of doing it. And there's also some really cool environmental puzzles that you can uh, solve with your, you know, co-op players and stuff like that as well. Curious to see how that all works, by the way, in single player too. So that's going to be an interesting one for sure. But let's go ahead and talk about the open-ended design. So after the tutorials for your character, and these details come from IGN, by the way, uh, you pick up any level uh, and just play to your heart's content. That's something that I really think is really cool is the freeform design with this game. So you beat the tutorial, you're good to go, and then you have uh, all these levels to tackle. I imagine you're going to want to build up certain resistances for certain levels to tackle those. Uh, but there's also still a story here, but this is one of the more open designs for this type of game. Uh, yeah. Now, they go on to say this. We wanted to keep it open-ended for players to play in any order they wanted. I could have played a few missions on my side, and you could have played a couple of other missions, and we're at different places in our progression. But we didn't want to limit players to being able to play with one another just based on which missions they have played. That's an excellent way uh, to tackle a co-op game, in my opinion, because this is a co-op centric uh, game, of course. I imagine a lot of you guys are going to want to hop on with friends, despite the fact that you can play in single player. Crossing my fingers that uh, the online stability is there, of course. That's going to be extremely <laughs> important to a game like this. You better believe it. But yeah, let's keep going. So uh, you will be able to rest uh, of course, at a fireplace, or I mean a campfire fireplace, a campfire in this game, uh, which is really beneficial. So let's go ahead and talk about that one. So uh, first of all, Caddy Bree uh, has a healing ability, and each player can equip up to four types of potions that, of course, can restore HP, remove buffs, or increase their ultimate charge rate. So yeah, you're going to have that ultimate ability that you can charge up through combat or increase that through a potion. Now, what's really, really interesting is this ability to take that short rest. Uh, so, you will be presented with some options here. Check this out. Once you hit the campfire, you have the option to take a short rest, which will uh, activate a new checkpoint. If you die, a, it'll refill your usables uh, and it will give you, you know, it will lose bonus. Let's talk about that one in just a moment. So, you could take the short rest or you can increase loot rarity and skip the short rest bonuses, which is risky, but the reward is that you're increasing your loot rarity right there. Now, uh, this is what the article goes on to say about taking a short rest. It says, in Dark Alliance, you could take that short rest after certain fights to refill your consumable items and create a checkpoint. Though, if you do take a short rest, you'll respawn all the monsters you've slain so far. Conversely, if you opt to skip a short rest when it's offered, you can increase your odds at finding better loot as you explore the level and defeat enemies. Uh, yeah, it's definitely an interesting trade-off for sure, and I personally think it's a really cool system. It kind of reminds me of Dark Souls for sure. Now, uh, let's go ahead and talk about the end game, shall we? So yeah, this is what the article says. Earning XP and unlocking new gear helps level each character up to the cap of 20. 
And along the way, they unlock up to six moves or abilities that can be assigned to either of their two skill slots. Now, then there are the actual dungeons of Dark Alliance high challenge missions that unlock at levels 10, 15, and 20. There are three in bosses, basically, this is what the creative director says. Once you've unlocked those last dungeons, then that's the in game. So there is an in game to Dark Alliance. Uh, and I'm curious to see what type of loot you get in the end game and how that works. Also, check this out, by the way. The hub space has its own... This is really, really cool. Your base camp has its own archery range and area where you can actually test out your weapons. So before you head out on to the battlefield, you can test out all of your gear, your weapons, your, uh, I guess you'd say spells and abilities to see how much damage they're doing and then head out and see uh, how you do. So I thought that was really cool, reminding me a bit of the Division 2. Uh, so yeah, that's really notable right there. Now, let's talk a little bit about post-launch support uh, and what we can expect uh, from that one uh, as well. But also let's talk about elemental gear sets too. So first of all, what's really important about elemental gear sets is they're gonna be so important for the end game. We just spoke about the end game a little bit. You're going to want to find a complete elemental gear set for your hero uh, because that's going to help you survive the higher challenge ratings and also that in game because there's going to be certain characters that are uh, specializing in you know certain elements whether it's lightning attacks fire attacks you're going to want to find that specific gear set for that character that you have that can resist that type of you know damage that's super important in this game apparently so uh, that's really noteworthy right there. All right, now on to the post-launch support. Support right here. It says, what Dark Alliance looks beyond level 20 is still up in the air. Now, Hadam says, he and the team are waiting to see how players respond to what they've got so far and will go from there. If they like the four characters and they want more, that's one avenue we can take. Uh, if they like the characters the way they are now and they want more content, if they want more missions, we can do that as well. If they want to just progress through their characters beyond level 20 and kind of grow the in-game uh, in game of their individual characters new systems, we have tons of ideas there too. So while we do have ideas on what we want to do, I really want to see how the game is played by players and where they want us to take it after we launch. So this is kind of like an outrider scenario from what I am seeing in that the player base is going to be deciding apparently what's going to be happening with the future of this game. Uh, it doesn't look like this game is a live service game. I kind of wish it was set up that way. It looks like they're going to be possibly releasing DLC based on feedback and how it goes. But again, you know, this game to me has a lot of potential. Again, it's going to be on Xbox Game Pass on console and on PC. So that's very different compared to Outriders. Uh, so that's going to be interesting. So a lot more... Uh, of an audience can actually play this one for sure. But yeah, that's what we know so far about Dungeons and Dragons, Dark Alliance. I'm pretty excited about this one. You know, there's also comparisons to this being like a dungeon crawler that's like built in the vein of Gears of War, which I find interesting as well. But it looks like a lot of fun. Reminds me of the old Dark Alliance game that I played on console. By the way, it is confirmed, I should have mentioned this earlier, that there is couch co-op in this as well and that's being worked on and will be released i think right after the game launches uh, it'll be released i think we'll see I, i'm not going to paraphrase them yet they're still ironing out the details but couch co-op is officially coming to this game stay tuned for more dark alliance news and updates hope you enjoyed the video uh, and yes yeah, stay tuned for more open world gaming goodness as well and i will see you all next time take care